Hi, this is Mrs. Van Horn reading Chapter 2, Upset Pet. I'd had bad days before. The worst day was when Miss Mack left. She was a substitute teacher who found me at Petorama and brought me to room 26. She almost broke my heart by moving to Brazil, which is so far away. I'd also overcome problems before, like getting Mrs. Brisbane and her husband Bert to go from not liking me to liking me a whole, whole, whole lot. But I'd never had a problem like this how to make friends with a frog. Back in my early days at Petorama, I'd met guinea pigs, mice, rats, gerbils, and chinchillas in the small pet department. If there were frogs around, they must have been over with the fish and less interesting pets. After school was over, Mrs. Brisbane gathered up her coat, glove, and books, walked over to Og and me, and said, well, fellows, you're on your own tonight. Have fun. And with that, she left. I recalled the first night that I was alone in room 26. As it slowly got dark outside, I slowly got scared inside. I would like, have liked a friend to talk to that night. Maybe Og felt the same way. Like Tabitha, Og was new to the class, and I thought I should try and make friends with him. Mrs. Brisbane had said it's not easy to be new. You should always listen to your teacher. Don't worry, Og, I squeaked to him. They'll all be back tomorrow, and Aldil will be here later. I waited for an answer, and all I heard was silence. I knew he probably couldn't understand me. Still, I'd learned to understand what humans said. And for the most part, they seemed to understand me when I chose to squeak up. Surely I could do as well with a frog. I decided to try again. Can you hear me? I squeaked as loudly as possible. Either he couldn't hear me, or he was just plain rude. I couldn't see him all the way from my cage, what with my wheel, my ladder, tree branches, sleeping house, and mirror. Since I knew Aldo wouldn't come in to clean the room for hours, I decided to introduce myself. As an experienced and well-loved classroom pet, I could share my wealth of knowledge about the schedule, the students, and the studies in room 26. Og could come to me for advice whenever he wanted. After all, you can learn a lot by taking care of another species, as Ms. Mack told me. Surely that included frogs. I easily opened the door to my cage. It has a loft that doesn't lock. However, I'm the only one who knows about it. To humans, it looks like it is tightly latched, but trust me, it is not. I'm coming over, Og, I announced. Again, there was no response. I scampered over to the meet my new roommate anyway. The glass tank had a big dish of water on one side and pebbles and plants on the other. There was a screen over the top. Sitting under a large green plant was a large green lump. I tiptoed over close to the glass and peered in. The lump was even uglier than I first thought at least compared to me. After all, I am a golden hamster with soft fur, dark, inquisitive eyes, and a little pink nose. Intelligent humans, such as Miranda Golden and Saeed Nasiri, have told me I am cute. This og thing, on the other hand, was a snickering shade of green, with bulging eyes and not a bit of fur on him. Even worse, he had a huge mouth, as wide as his whole body, that curved up at the end, as if he were grinning. He didn't look happy, just creepy. I tried not to shudder. Allow me to introduce myself. I am your neighbor, Humphrey. I squeaked politely as possible. No answer. Maybe he couldn't hear me. After all, he didn't have cute round ears like me. He didn't seem to have ears at all. But at least he could see I was acting in a friendly manner. Og. Stepping closer, I squeaked a bit louder this time. Even though we don't know each other, I'm happy to extend the paw of friendship. Then, with no warning at all, Og launched right at me and let out a very loud boing. I must, I must have leapt foot backwards. Og couldn't get through the glass, but goodness, he startled me. I was only trying to be friendly, I told him, backing up toward my cage. Boing, he sounded like a broken guitar string. I sneaked a peek at him. Was that a grin or a le was that grin a leer or a sneer? My heart was still pounding as I darted back into my cage and slammed the door behind me. Some friend Og was scaring me like that. I tried to put myself in his shoes, like Mrs. Brisbane said, but he didn't wear any. Neither did I, for that matter. I grabbed the tiny notebook and pencil from behind my mirror. Miss Mack gave them to me. No one in room 26 knew about them. No one knew I could read and write. Writing helps me sort out my thoughts, and I had a lot of thoughts rolling around in my brain that night. Not all of them nice. I scribbled away for several hours. Og was pretty quiet, except for some annoying splashing. Good. Ness, I can manage to groom myself and get a drink of water without making that much noise. 
Suddenly, the room filled with blazing light, and I heard a familiar clang, clang, clang. It was the Longfellow School custodian, Aldo Amato. Be of good cheer, because Aldo's here, a voice announced. Aldo, my friend, I squeaked as I jumped on my wheel and began spinning happily. Aldo parked his cleaning cart near the door and clumped over to my cage. Happy New Year, Humphrey. You're looking handsome and healthy, he told me. Aldo is a true friend. And you the same, I squeaked back. Who's your buddy? Aldo glanced at Og. Hey, I know you, the frog from down the hall. What are you doing here? You don't want to know, I squeaked. Aldo turned back to me. Calm down, pal. I brought you something. And he reached into his pocket and unwrapped the most beautiful tiny tomato I've ever seen. I could have cried. Thanks, Aldo, I squeaked as I tucked the treat in my cheek pouch. You're welcome, Humphrey. Aldo looked over at Og again. Sorry, I don't know what frogs eat. You don't want to know either, I assured him. Aldo grabbed a paper bag and pulled a chair up close to me. May I join you for dinner, he asked. He didn't need to ask. We'd shared many happy evenings while he took his dinner break. I took a deep breath. Aldo gave off a pleasant smell of chalk dust and pine spray. He smelled that way I imagined a forest smells. Somewhere way, way back in time. Wild hamsters must have lived in forests. Down in sweet earthy piles of rotting leaves and fallen pine cones. Yep, Aldo smelled like home. Mind if we have a little talk, he asked. Of course I didn't. I'd been trying to get old Lumpy to talk all evening. I got something to tell you, Humph. Remember how I gave my girlfriend Maria an engagement ring for Christmas? Well, I've got bigger news. On New Year's Day, she and I ran off and got married. And he held up his left hand. A gold band glittered on one finger. I hope you'll be happy, 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 I squeaked with delight. Thanks, pal. I know I told you that you'd be at my wedding, but we decided to get hitched quietly. You understand, he asked. And naturally, I squeaked, yes. After all, I'd helped them get together the first place. And when I met Maria, she was as nice as Aldo. Yep, I'm an old married man now, real happy. But I've started thinking, Humphrey. I like this job, but it doesn't pay a whole lot. Aldo paused to chew a bite of his sandwich. I'd like to have kids and a house and maybe raise a couple of hamsters of my own. Fine with me as long as he didn't raise any frogs. I sure would love to have my evenings free to spend with my family. Pal, I've got to find a way to get a better job, Aldo continued. You can do it, I squeaked. Aldo was quieter than usual as he finished his dinner. I spun on my wheel to entertain him, but he was lost in thought. Finally, he folded up his bag. Guess I'm not good company tonight, Humphrey. I bet that frog makes better conversation than I do. Fat chance, I squeaked. After Aldo cleaned the room and left, I did some thinking. Personally, I believed Aldo was already as fine a human as I've ever seen. I'd miss him if he worked somewhere else. But he was my friend, so if he wanted a better job, I wanted to help him. I started jetting down ideas in my notebook and lost track of time. Later, I heard splashing. I'd almost forgotten about you-know-who next door. Hey, what's shaking, Og? I called out to him. Maybe he'd thought over his bad behavior and wanted to apologize for his bad manners. There was no reply. Just splash, splash, splash. Personally, the idea of being covered in water is disgusting to me. I prefer to groom myself the time-honored way using the tongue, teeth, paws, and toenails. I thoroughly clean myself every day. The students in room 26 love to watch me. At least they did before Google Eyes came along. Still, if I had to share a table with him, I figured I might try, try, try again to be friendly. Having a nice bath, I asked. There was no answer. Not even another splash. But there was another sound. The crickets. So they were alive after all. Og would have to eat noisy food. My nutri nibbles and mighty mealworms didn't make a sound until I crunched on them. But the crickets, whom I actually felt sorry for, made a funny singing song. Chirp, chirp. Apparently, they were nocturnal like me. That was going to be a long night with noisy crickets and a silent frog. I hopped on my wheel and tried to spin my irritation away. It didn't work. The only way to have a friend is to be one. Ralph Waldo Emerson, American poet and essayist.